So, I think the Diwali fireworks have calmed down enough for me to to do this video now. Um, I'm a little bit choked up at the moment because I've just finished watching Ready Player One, which is very much a, a rewind of my childhood, basically, which is lovely. Good uh, old Steven Spielberg, well played, sir. Anyway, back on topic. This is a Dinky Toys Eagle Transporter from Space 1999. A British science fiction series by Jerry Anderson, which was live action, but was very much Jerry Anderson in terms of its model work and so on. And this was one of those models. And it was one of my very favourite toys growing up. This is not mine. I've acquired this very, very recently to my mild surprise. There's a wonderful shop in the town where I live, which specialises in old toys of this nature. And I just saw the the Eagle's command module sticking out from underneath other dinky boxes, smiled quietly to myself and decided that um, I had to justify myself getting it. This version is actually so old that it predates the one that I had growing up. And you can tell that by the colour of the RCS thrusters on the green landing pods and by the fact that its big engines at the back are chrome rather than red. So, this is all on the, uh, the updates section of the project on LEGO Ideas, uh, uh, the LEGO website, where you can put forward ideas that you would like LEGO to make into real LEGO sets. And if they attract 10,000 votes, then LEGO consider making them into real LEGO sets. And they, they will actually redesign them somewhat as well to make sure they fit LEGO standards. So, long story short, the idea popped into my head, and it's popped into others' heads as well, because it's been tried before, but no one's got up to 10,000 with it, that I would change this model into this model, which, as you can see, is substantially larger. If I put one alongside the other, you'll get a sense of just how big the difference is in terms of the scale of mine compared to the original. Now, there is a very good reason for this and part of the reason is accident um, and I'm being completely honest here and that's because the studio software which I used can actually read out how big the CGI version of it is but I didn't know that until after I designed this. So as a result it's big. The reason it's big, and I will show you now, is that it is effectively minifigure scale. It's not minifigure scale like the original Eagle is, because it can't be, uh, to my mind, because it would bust the upper piece limit for LEGO Ideas projects, which is 3000. But I wanted to include minifigures. So all I've done is effectively said this is a a smaller version of the Eagle that they develop after the moon has been blown out of Earth's orbit in order to conserve their resources. So as a result, it's actually only a, a one pilot Eagle. So I will show you. This is why I wanted to do this video because it just I can't really convey it easily using CGI and so on. So here you have the command module of the Eagle. It comes across, comes out very, very easily and it'll, it allows you to swap out the pilot in the back here. And I tried to make the pilot as close as I reasonably could to the original design of the Space 1999 astronaut suits. So you can see here that he's a yellow body mini, I'm sorry, yellow body, orange body minifigure with a white life support system and a white, uh, um, a yellow visor and helmet and white gloves. And I'm sure that you know Lego designers officially could get even closer to the, the original suit designs. So the idea is then there'd be I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's a little you could put a little screen on um, a monitor in here so you'd have a sort of a modern touchscreen style display to control the ship with. Might change the colour of these tiles but Inevitably, when you design these things, some of the colours that you want just aren't available in actual Lego yet. 
but Lego, of course, could produce them in that colour in small quantities for idea sets. So there's room to tinker around the edges. But the idea with this was originally going to be Technic pins to try and lock it into the, the main body. But I realised that, that that just wasn't going to be workable. And I came out with this design here so that it actually looks as if it's sort of hermetically sealed when it's on. There aren't any gaps. So as you would expect in a real spacecraft, there's nowhere for air to escape out of. And then that can just slot back on fairly straightforwardly. There's also a variant I came up with, which I haven't built physically because it would mean taking all this apart again. And um, you could attach the command module directly to one of these sort of main body elements and then strap the engines onto the back of that. And you end up with what I call the eaglet, which is a baby eagle, which appropriately enough. Um, and then you'd have a little mini spaceship you could fly around. So it's kind of two sets in one. The girders here ideally would be white as they are on the dinky eagle that I just showed you because at least that in so much as that's white that's show accurate. Unfortunately I discovered as I was sourcing the various parts for this that although there are white versions of these girders they were only ever produced for a very 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 limited edition set that only came out in certain countries. And as a result, they are incredibly expensive and very difficult to get hold of. So I had to settle for grey <laughs> as a compromise. But obviously, again, making more white ones wouldn't be a problem for Lego. So it would be easy to get this closer to the, the look and feel of the real show. It would need some, some decals here um, to replicate some of the windows in the original version of the eagle from the show. But that's not a major issue, I don't think. This is the the pod. Now, I'm going to try and make some more pods as time goes on. I'm currently at about 850 supporters. So you can see the idea is that these pods are interchangeable. And depending on the, the mission that the eagle was going on, they would put an appropriate pod um, in place for it. So the entire eagle. And as you can see, the, I think it's, it's about the limits of what the Lego will take in terms of the weight that's at the front and the weight that's at the back. And what these plates can hold but it does hold together um, to my relief so that's as long as it's probably likely to be able to get and again maybe proper lego designers could make it a little bit longer still that's possible so this is the the standard sort of passenger pod that the eagles came with now this is tricky to get open and again it's an area where it could probably be improved but the idea was with this that it will hinge out like this and that gives you some play access into the the pod itself without actually having to take the roof off but equally the roof and <laughs> here comes the litmus test yep there we go I knew it was going to do that in theory the roof comes off as a fairly single segment which of course it hasn't done because I'm videoing it so it wouldn't would it um, but anyway again Proper Lego engineers can come in and fix that for, for us, I'm sure. And so the idea is that you would then end up with that roof section removed and easy access into the entirety of the pod where you find another uh, Moonbase Alpha astronaut, an Alphan. Um, computer terminal sort of here on the side. He's sat in a little seat and you also get this moon buggy built into it as well. And the moon buggy would just um, would actually use this to, to slot onto it to stop it rolling around quite so much when it's being flown around the place. And again, there's some more computer terminals here just for decoration. You could change it, you could leave the buggy out altogether and just add more seats in so you could carry more minifigures in there. As I say, as it, if it becomes more popular, then I will try and do some variants on this basic pod so people can have a look at that and hopefully increase you know, the, the interest in it again. Um, alternatively you could just put more seats in or you could do whatever you wanted I mean it's a big space to put something into there so it gives a lot of scope for people to do their own designs with it underneath you can see it's got thrusters as the show had for it so it could sort of land independently if in an emergency if you want to sort of detach it and let it let it roll so to speak and that's that's perfectly possible and um, there are also thrusters on the on the underside of the eagle there as well. Originally, I was going to put those in chrome, but it turned out that those were very very expensive parts to get as well, and all very difficult to get. So I didn't I didn't bother with that. But there is again there's the potential that Lego could 
um, increase the shininess factor and get it nearer to that, that dinky model, which I think might be quite nice. Um, depends what people would like, I suppose. Depends what Lego feels is, is best to try and keep the costs down. The um, in terms of sort of the challenges, I've done various iterations of this, as you might imagine. And there's, there's a little bit of detail here, just on the um, the legs, just to add in a little bit of detail that's there on the original eagles. So they're not just sort of straight down struts. They've got a little bit of um, added detail to them. The RCS thrusters here are really quite tricky to reproduce because. I wanted to use the that the sort of traditional um, three thruster assembly that's been around in Lego for donkey's years, but I needed four thrusters, so three won't cut it unfortunately. So I had to sort of compromise with that a little bit. And again, it's maybe something that Lego could think of some other way of doing. I don't know, but I, I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out overall. The, the proportions are a little bit off in terms of the. Um, the original eagles, but I'm, I'm happy with that in the sense that this isn't supposed to be an original eagle. This is a variant. It's supposed to be smaller, so it's a little bit sort of dumpier, I suppose, a little bit squatter than a um, you know a full-on eagle would be. But I think anyone seeing this will recognise it as an eagle from Space 1999, and that's what I was going for because it was very much a show of my childhood, and the early stories in season one in particular were very hard science fiction. Um, and I think that had a lasting influence on me. I mean, I was I watched Thunderbirds, I watched Stingray. I've got a Stingray Lego Ideas project up at the, at the moment as well. If you want to have a look at that, along with um, a Terra Hawks one as well. And I think it's important with these things that I'm trying to go for a, a degree of playability as well as a degree of authenticity, so that people who are familiar with the the show that I'm taking the model from say, yeah, okay, I get it, that's recognisable, I understand what you're know what you trying to produce there. But I also want younger guys and gals who are not familiar with the series to say, actually, that's fun, I could do something with that, I could play with that, you know, that would be a nice thing to have. And this is about the length of um, a Lego X-Wing. So it's not a small model, and I was very, very surprised when I, when I eventually put it all together and realised that I actually created a bit of a monster. And I was really concerned that I mean, the, the, the fundamental reason why I wanted to build a physical model and not just rely on the CGI was that I wasn't personally convinced that the size of it was actually going to be workable in Lego. And that's why, in particular, the, sort of this spine area, I wanted to test to see if it would actually take the weight. Because I thought, I'm not being honest with people if I can't demonstrate that even a prototype done by myself as an amateur will actually work. So that's why I came up with this, this physical version of it as a prototype, just to try and convince people. And um, if I can give you a, a piece of advice, if you're ever taking one of your mocks to an exhibition, make sure it's in a box and make sure you're very, very careful taking it in. Because when I took mine to an exhibition of scratch built Jerry Anderson models, which obviously put mine to shame inevitably, but Anyway, um, I dropped it uh, before I actually got in through the exhibition um, doors and um, I spent a good 20 minutes or so trying to remember how I built it in the first place in order to reconstruct it and get it on a table to show people. Um, and that was at Cromford Mills in, in Derbyshire, if anyone was there. And um, I've got a, a gallery of those pictures, if anyone's interested, up on the updates um, links from the project. So. It's completely free to support LEGO Ideas. You just have to have a LEGO account, click the blue support button. The more the merrier. Um, there are lots of really, really interesting projects on Ideas at any given point in time. So do have a mooch round. You know, I'm in lockdown again at the moment, so everyone's got lots of free time on their hands-ish if you're on furlough. I haven't been yet, unfortunately, so um, this has been a, a part-time thing for me. But if you'd like to lend your support, I'd be very grateful. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, that's it for me for the time being. So when I do do some more pods, I will try and do some videos with those as well to show you here. And in the meantime, um, keep safe, keep well, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers.